Deadpool, the merc with a mouth, the regenerating degenerate. What can Marvel's rated R superstar and his complete disregard for the fourth wall teach us about philosophy? Is Deadpool the greatest philosopher ever? Is that the dumbest question ever? Let's find out. Hey you fancy nerds, I'm Jay and this is a quick take. This video is based on the first chapter of the book Deadpool and Philosophy My Common Sense is Tingling by Dr. Grant. Isn't that a great title? To quote the book's opening directly, the fact is Deadpool brings us a literally obscene number of philosophical questions. Now there are many videos out there covering a wide array of these questions. This one from Wisecrack is my favorite, but it's not like they need my help to get views. But today we're going to concentrate on one very specific idea. Is Deadpool a philosopher? Minor movie spoilers ahead, and so with that in mind, it's time for maximum effort. In short, Deadpool knows that he's fictional. In the very least, he's taken a very intuitive wild guess. What this means is that Deadpool can examine his existence from the outside in a way that you and I will simply never be able to do. Sure, you and I can attempt to step back and examine our lives from the outside, and that's what good philosophers do. However, unlike Deadpool, we have trouble visualizing our place in the universe from the outside without feeling disassociated or disconnected from the events of our lives. This can feel like a mild but creepy deja vu or even seem like a mental illness. Think about a stranger talking to himself in the third person, for example. The fact of the matter is that this sort of temporary disconnection from our own reality is often the best tool that philosophers and even sociologists have to try and learn about the world and our place in it. You can't make objective observations about yourself or your world until you at least try to imagine that you have an objective viewpoint, even while knowing that an objective viewpoint is something you will never truly have. This is why being able to break the fourth wall makes Deadpool potentially such a great philosopher. To clarify, let's take a look at one quick example. In the 2016 Deadpool movie, as Colossus drags Deadpool off to see Professor X, our deformed avocado of an anti-hero has a question. McAvoy or Stewart? This line is a great example of what we're talking about here. When Colossus or Negasonic Teenage Warhead go to see Professor X, they see a wise, powerful mutant leader who coincidentally went from being a dead ringer for James McAvoy to being a dead ringer for Sir Patrick Stewart as he got older if those actors even exist in that universe at all. My point is that Deadpool is using resources from outside his fictional universe. He knows that Professor X has been portrayed by two actors. He knows that there are multiple timelines within Fox's cinematic X-Men universe, and that sort of information comes as a direct result of his ability to break the fourth wall. He put his own universe into context in a way that is simply unimaginable to the rest of the inhabitants of that universe. For the most part, philosophers do the same thing. Some of them even go so far as to suppose that our world is fictional, or a computer simulation, or an idea in the mind of God herself. To quote Dr. Grant directly, they, philosophers, want to look at the world from the outside, or failing that, they want to look at their own lives from the outside. Wouldn't knowing the exact source of your own universe and importing information from that source be uniquely helpful in that endeavor? Classical Greek philosopher Socrates once said something to the effect of, an unexamined life is not worth living. When Deadpool breaks the fourth wall, he's able to ask questions about his own life, many that few people in his own universe can ask. He's also able to examine his own life in a way that is simply not available to philosophers in this universe. Furthermore, he's able to break the fourth wall within his own fourth wall break. In that instance, he's not just examining his universe from the outside by stepping into ours, he's also examining his own life and seeing that stepping outside of his life is a characteristic of his life. Put simply, he can only break the fourth wall during a fourth wall break by being aware that breaking the fourth wall is a habit of his. Frankly, it's an astonishing level of self-awareness both within the fictional universe and within our real universe. Well, our probably real universe. 
By practicing the same act of stepping back and attempting to look at our lives objectively from the outside, we too can live an examined life. And that level of self-awareness would be helpful and valuable to any of us. All things considered, Deadpool and Philosophy is a weird but wonderful book. It's totally unlicensed, and yet it contains interjections from Deadpool himself. The whole thing is crass, rude, and deep and thoughtful. It's a paradox, much like Deadpool, and I love it. We only covered the first few pages, so if you're interested, there's a link in the description below. Full disclosure, it's an affiliate link. If you want more from this book or even just my thoughts on the rest of this chapter, please let me know in the comments section below. This channel is totally fan-funded by our lovely patrons on Patreon. If you can, please support the channel at patreon.com slash fancyteeth. Even one dollar a month can make a big difference. Until next time, guys, be kind to each other. I'm Jay Parks.